Okay. Okay. Uh, so who is this user who has posed a question saying that we uh, are preparing invoice as billing to Karnataka and sending the materials to Chennai. Our factory is in Chennai only. What should we, what should be the tax IGST or CGST, SGST? Suresh. So can anyone answer this question? Suresh is asking a question. Please go to your chat box. You will be able to see Suresh question. Yeah. Suresh, you got the answer. It should be IGST. Good. Okay. So let's move forward. So let's go to presentation. Look at what are all the things that we have yet to cover. So these things are covered. Okay, so now in this, we covered the sales and purchase part. Okay, there is some income and expenditure part. Right. So we uh, in the business, we have a lot of expenses we do. Okay, and we would also have a lot of other incomes, which might attract the GST or which might not attract the GST. Uh, Suresh, uh, since the dispatch address is Chennai, okay, the customer will also have a Chennai registered number. So you need to take Chennai GST number for them. Okay, you should not bill against Karnataka GST number of the customer. You need to take the customer GST registrations of Tamil Nadu and bill against that and mark it as IGST. Okay, bill 2 will be Karnataka, where bill 2 will be Karnataka uh address karnataka gst number ship 2 will be chennai address and chennai gst number hope this is fine with you okay so we were just talking about expense ledger so like example i'll tell you okay there are a lot of expenditure that as an organization we do say example every month we pay rent of our office building we end up paying gst Okay, we uh, pay telephone bills, communication bills, we end up making GST payments. Okay, like that, there are a lot of expenditures under on which we will end up paying GST. So you need to check out with GST law. For certain expenditures, you could claim input tax credit. For certain expenditures, input tax credit is ineligible. Okay, say example, you go to a hotel, Okay, and you uh, go with your customer, okay, or with uh, your colleagues, okay, and have dinner, okay, and the bill is 8,000 rupees. So they charge, so it's an AC uh, restaurant, and they charge 18% interest, sorry, 18% GST on that. So that is not eligible to claim as input tax credit. Like that, there is a list of ineligible input tax that you can avail. So you need to go through that to understand that. And there are certain expenses where you could claim input tax credit. Say example, it might be a office rent. Okay, it might be uh, telephone or communication charges. Okay, it might be some capital expenditures that you're doing. So all these things, you can claim input tax credit. And in few of the capital expenditures, you could claim half of the input tax credit so for that, you need to get into deep into the GST loss to understand against what you can claim how much of credit. Okay, so as we move forward, okay, we will see how to account expenses, which has the GST effect and how to account expenses where we cannot claim an input tax GST. Okay, so we will look at both. Okay, so we'll just move on to tally and start seeing how to look at this. Ramesh, a store or studio interiors 
can we take input sir you need to tell me what is the nature of purchase what is the nature of expenditure you are doing rather than saying the store or this thing because the nature of expenditure why you are spending this money okay will determine whether you can take input tax credit or not so if you could tell me why you are spending this what is the purpose of this then we could know renovation of new stores yes you could take input tax credit okay so let's move on so let's go to tally and say now we want to account an expenditure okay so generally where do you account expenditure under what voucher type you account the expenditure so under what voucher type you account the expenditure say example there is a telephone expenses under which voucher type you will account jv yes you will account under journal entry journal voucher so let us just go and make one jv for telephone expenditure okay so telephone expenses you need to have the ledger so for easy purpose what i have done is i have gone through uh, some of uh, the uh, documents and i have got few details to ensure that the data entry becomes smoother so let us just go to this okay so now i want to account a bill that has come from bharti airtel okay just typically telephone and data usage charges so i am just creating one ledger with telephone and data usage charges this is my indirect expenses gst is applicable since the inventory value here is no you need to give all the gst details in the ledger itself so i am just saying yes it's a gst expenditure and what is the hsn or sac code it is 9984 okay so generally this is my purchase taxable okay which is inside this state okay or at this level you could just leave it as not applicable and say taxable it is charged at 18% so just specify at the ledger level itself and this is the service this is not the goods okay say example 2500 rupees is the bill before gst okay this is before gst only the actual usage bill amount on this there is an input tax so i'll just say input cgst we need to manually calculate simple reason being you are accounting the expenses where you have bill in front of you based on the bill that is available in front of you you are doing an accounting so you don't get auto calculations on the voucher entry mode in the voucher entry mode okay auto calculations are not available where you have to manually calculate and key in the figures so on 2500 so here you just look at one more magic so now i am in the amount field now i need to do some calculations so what i am going to do is rather than taking the calculator typing everything i am just clicking on alt c on tally which is typically opening the calculator of tally where i am giving my calculations into 0.09 that is 9% 225 rupees okay by input sgst it is 225 rupees okay now i should also have bill i need to give the bill reference number against which bill i have got because that has to pull it for gst reports for that what you need to do is once when you open the jv click on f12 configure click on f12 configuration okay then enable an option called use reference number in journals enable this option called use reference number in journals where it will open the reference number here is where you need to key in the cust supplier bill number okay so i am just updating the supplier bill number and the supplier bill date the bill date is 12th of april i am accounting on 14th of april to bharti airtel 
So Bharti Airtel list is not available with me. I'm just creating a ledger called Bharti Airtel and I have their GST number also. This comes under sundry creditors. They are my suppliers. Bill by bill is required. Country is India, state is Karnataka. Pin code, whatever the pin code is, specify that. Okay, take it as regular. What kind of GST registrations they are and update their GST number. All right. So this is the entry that I'm passing where I'm specifying to start with the bill number, supplier bill number, the bill date, ledger I have created, value I have given before GST, then I have calculated the GST amount and cross verifying with the bill, what is the GST amount that the input tax credit that's available for me and Bharti Airtel Limited. I have just taking this invoice. Okay, here I give as new reference number, five days of credit I get. So by 19th of April, I need to pay being expenses accounted. Okay, I've just accounted one expenditure. So if you just go and look at, there is one journal entry that we have passed. Now, this should affect which report? GSTR1 or GSTR2? Which will it affect? Whether it is GSTR1 or GSTR2? Yes, it will affect GSTR2. So I'll go to GSTR2. In GSTR2, okay, so this is coming under B2B invoices. Is it coming? Bharti Airtel bill number taxable value 2500 450 is the input tax credit. Is it available here? Right, it's available. Okay. But if you go here, there is also one mismatch. Let us look at what is this mismatch. It says information required for generating tables are not provided. Okay, bill of entry number for Sharda Inc. Okay, this is for my import, sorry, exports. Sorry, import basically. So we need to give the bill, uh, bill number, bill of entry number is invalid. Okay, bill date is 4th of April, port code. Okay, so both are invalid. We need to give the right valid numbers. But here you are able to see in B2B, you are getting Bharti Airtel bill. Right? Okay, so now let us go and make one more expenditure entry. JV, I am just changing the date to 15th. Okay, so now let me take one more office rent. Okay, so Vintesh is my landlord. Office rent is what we are going to pay for him. Okay, so the bill number, I am just giving the bill number. Accounting, the bill was given on 10th to us. Okay, I don't have office rent. So I am just accounting rent office. It's an expenditure. GST is applicable. HSN code, SSC code. I have not got that SSC code. I'll just, I'm just giving one SSC code. Taxable at 18%. It's a service. Say example, I'm paying 20,000 rupee rent. Okay, then I'm going to buy input CGST. Nine hundred rupees. Input SGST. Nine hundred rupees. Sorry, it's not nine hundred. It is uh, eighteen hundred, right? Eighteen hundred. Eighteen hundred. Two. Vinkatesh. It's not available. I am creating. Vinkatesh. Example. I am saying. Landlord. 
okay comes under suppliers i need bill wise details name is venkatesh address i can give his complete address gst number i have his gst number over here i'm just updating the gst number okay so new reference 10 days of credit by 25th i'm supposed to pay being rent accounted so save this transaction now if i go to display statutory report gstr2 this is available as five entries you go enter over here you get vintage landlord see here it's showing the gst number number of invoices is one okay which is the place of supply what is the taxable invoice value and what is the tax everything is getting updated is that clear so now all these things what we have done is a proper entry but in reality it doesn't happen there will be some mistakes right we end up doing some or the other mistakes so i'll, I'll just show you okay let us make few mistakes and do the transaction say example i have not given the reference number i am just saying i am i am making one more transactions on 16th okay so i'll say rent itself rent of office one more 25000 i need to pay okay by okay example input igst for by mistake i have just selected igst okay and i have taken 25000 into 0.18 18% okay so vintage i have just credited okay making a new transaction okay 10 days of credit i am just saying test entry for checking the mistakes the entry will still get accepted at the entry level you will not have any problem but if you go to gstr2 report you will see that there is a mistake invoice with mismatch it is showing over here okay and but it has accounted here as 8100 okay but here it is showing invoice with mismatch if you go to invoice with mismatch so here it is saying information required for generating table is not provided see here venkatesh what it is saying original invoice number is not specified or it exceeds 16 characters and date is not specified so either the original it's saying first is the original invoice number is not there so you are not updated the original invoice number so what you could do is you could make corrections here itself you could just click on enter and update the original invoice number you could give the invoice number and the invoice date say example i'll say invoice date is 1st of april okay accept it got accepted but it is still saying it's now it's giving one more error you go here it says information required for table wise details is not provided okay so this is for sharda inc okay if you come here incorrect tax type selected in tax ledger so it's saying incorrect tax type selected okay so venkatesh landlord it is asking for 25000 you have to select cgst but you are not selected the cgst so it is asking what is the cgst amount and what is the sgst amount okay but you have selected by mistake igst you have selected right so you need to specify okay cgst duty as per transaction there is nothing okay so example i am just saying 2000 so it is what the ledger specify it should be in input cgst and this should be input sgst first you need to make this changes then you need to go and correct this thing say like example now it has moved to cgst sgst right 
So like this, you could go on, continue to do corrections. See now, in the entry, it has automatically changed. Earlier, we had given IGST, but since we made a correction in the report, it's automatically correcting in the transaction. Is this clear? See here it is showing as per your record, it is recording here in B2B invoice, but it is showing here as mismatch. Okay, but if you are doing the same in GSTR1, it will not even show, it will just show only the mismatch. Okay, so is that clear? Any questions on this? Rajesh, office rent with TDS deductions, TDS to be deducted on rent, Krishna Prasad. Yes, TDS needs to be deducted. We will take this TDS deductions when we take the topic of TDS. Not today. Okay, because we need to look at how the TDS configuration needs to be done. Okay, for simple transaction purpose, I could just create one TDS ledger and show it to you. Okay, but if you want to have the complete TDS records, then you need to implement the TDS that we will take it in this separate session which we have planned in the TDS. So is this clear how to make the, how to account the expenses? Okay, fine. So let's move on. Now, other things that comes when you are doing an accounting is basically at the month end, okay, you need to make adjustments. So at the month end, you need to calculate what is the tax payable. Correct. So there are certain rules. Okay. So first you need to know. So, so now if you look at, say example, now if you look at if these are the transactions for the month. Okay. So what are all the reports that you get over here? Display, GST reports. Statutory reports, GST R3B. This is your monthly return. So in monthly returns, what you are getting? You are getting, so you could just go to configure. Okay. And specify you need a separate tables. Okay. So now what you are getting is your taxable value is 18,13,475. You have to pay so much of tax, 1,79,409. And you have an eligible input tax credit of 9,21,641. Okay, how, how does this 9 lakh is coming? Okay, if you just press shift and enter, it will give you a breakup. On import purchases, you have done 7 lakhs where you where uh, you have an integrated tax of, sorry, uh, integrated tax of 7 lakh rupee. You have other ITC, that uh, that is other input tax credit against other bills of 1,59,200. So the net is 8,59,200 of integrated tax, 31,207 of CGST and SGST. Okay. Then values of exempt or nil rated items is 2,800, which doesn't have any effect on your GST. And now you have an URD purchase for which you need to pass a JV to account the liability. Okay, so there are certain JVs that you need to pass, journal entries that you need to pass to close the month end records. Okay, so for that, say example, the first thing is I need to pass a JV for accounting input tax credit for URD purchases. So now if I look at the URD purchase, so the taxable value is 25,800, 3520 and 3520 is tax. Right? So let's do one thing. So if I want to account this tax on URD purchases, so I'm just going to the voucher entry. Okay, example, I do all these adjustments on 30th of April on the last day of the month. Okay, look at this very, very carefully. Okay, because I don't know how many of you are following this on your monthly routines. So here is where I need to do the monthly adjustments and close my GSTR report and match it 
and make the payment to the department okay so here what i need to do is i need to pass a jv first to account the G, uh, urd tax okay so i am just clicking on stat adjustment so it will show what are all the statutory uh, complaints that you are following gst then what is the nature of adjustment so you have multiple natures of adjustment over here so do you want to decrease the tax liability or do you want to increase the input tax credit or you want to in pre increase tax liability or you want to increase tax liability and input tax credit or there is some opening balance adjustments that you have to do or there is some refund that you have to account as jv then reversal of input tax credit or reversal of tax liability all this nature of adjustments that you could do okay in the current scenario what we are trying to do is in the given example we are trying to increase the input tax credit because we have made an urd purchases and on that we have to actually account the input tax credit right so i am just saying increase in input tax credit then it will ask additional details why do you want to increase input tax credit what is the reason that you are increasing the input tax credit the reasons are all listed out here for what reasons you are increasing the input tax credit either it might be import on capital goods import of goods import of services isd transfers others so like that the list is available you could read through each of these things okay so in this example we are increasing the input tax credit for the reason we have made purchases under reverse charge or purchases from unregistered dealer we have made purchase from unregistered dealer so we want to increase that input tax credit okay so now this is what the additional details you have selected used for increase of input tax credit for the reason purchase from unregistered dealer so this is an adjustment entry so what do you debit so this is your expense okay you are paying tax from your in, in the sense you are accounting the tax from your pocket so it should be an expense for you okay so example i am just creating one ledger called uh, tax on urd purchases okay typically it's an expense gst is not applicable on this okay so like example what is the tax that we need to account say let, let us make some calculation so that we account it in the right way so that you could look at it so uh, there were two items right there were one uh, 25000 one and some another 400 something was there okay we'll come back to that we'll just note down this we are not i have not done the entry i am just going to look cross check what is the amount that we need to account okay under urd there is 7040 urd purchases there is a tax liability so 25800 is the taxable value on that 3520 and 3520 right so let me just note down here 25800 3520 and 3520 so this is what the tax liability i'm supposed to adjust okay so now i am going to the journal clicking on stat adjustment gst increasing input increase of input tax credit for the reason purchase from unregistered dealer okay debit we created one ledger tax on urd purchases so what is the tax that i am supposed to account 3520 into 2 this is the liability that i need to create okay so let us look at this ledger okay this is an expense so i am debiting the expense not applicable okay i am debiting the expense 
of 3520 into 2 and sorry i am supposed I'm, I'm sorry one second it is not the debiting the expense i need to okay strivikram will come back to you one second so here i am just increasing the input tax credit uh, gst increase in input tax credit for purchase from unregistered dealer debit input cgst see here what is the rate at 18 percent taxable value was 25200 so this is nine percent Okay, because 9% goes to CGST and 9% goes to SGST. 3520 debit input SGST 9% at 3520 3520 credit. I need to make it as payable GST payable. Okay, so I put it under one ledger called current liabilities. Later, I will see how to adjust that. So I am just saying uh tax on URD purchases okay under current liability this is my liability okay now provide GST details over here okay you could specify for the period what period that you are doing this and type of input whether it's a capital good or it's normal goods or services so this is what you need to specify is it a capital goods or a normal goods or services so in this case it is capital goods being input tax on URD adjustment entry okay so this is where i have accounted three seven thousand forty rupees so if you go to display statutory reports gstr2 okay so now that has got accounted okay and it will be available as part of your gstr filing where it has got accounted as part of your inputs Okay, so you could come over here, look at this liability. See now this liability has gone. Okay, and total liability it has taken over here. Okay, so this is how you account this liability. Once when you account these things liability like this, so here this is not only for URD purchases, for various things you could use to ensure that you are adjusting these things at the month end to close your books of accounts and adjust all the de remaining details for your monthly GST filings. Right? So this is one critical entry, one or more entries at the end of the month, you need to ensure that these things are passed so that you are very clear. Okay, one more thing that I'll show you, one more magic I'll show you, okay, in tally. So one of the things is in your GSTR2, now the government is saying what? You will get the input tax credit only if your supplier files the GST returns or files his GSTR1 and makes the payment, right? So I should know whether my supplier has uploaded his invoice so that I'll get the input tax credit or not. How do we do this? So in tally, there is an option where you could actually import the data from GST portal. 
so morning what we discussed was how do you push the data to eway bill portal now i am saying how could you import the data that is available as part of gstr 2a from your gst portal and reconcile in tally you could also do that okay so to do that i cannot show you on demo data actually i need to take your uh, take the live data okay then i will be able to show how the uh, input tax credit reconciliations could be done using the data from your gst portal right so let me just give a try how to do that let me just see whether i have my live data my company live data so that i could show it to you people okay so i can just show you how it works it is very very useful for most of the businesses say example i'll just go to export files so this is my gst 3b gst of 1 okay one sec just hold on 1819 just go to downloads yeah so example i have one gst or 2a that I have downloaded for the month of january okay so this is my gst or 2a that i have downloaded from my uh from my login in gst so i'll just copy this for time being in this folder okay so now let's do one thing i'll just open my live data because i cannot run on uh, sample data that's the live data so let me just open my live data i'm just closing this tally okay just give me a minute i'll just open my live data i'm not able to get this okay so let's do one thing let me just go to d colon tally rp9 okay so i'm just opening my live data hope everyone is able to see my screen so i'm just opening 1920 data okay so this is my company live data which i have opened now if i want to do the reconciliation for the month of january so example i'm just going to uh, sorry uh, display statutory reports gstr2 and i will select which month so for january uh, okay so this is i need to go to previous year 1419 to 313 20 display statutory report gstr 2 for the month of january okay so this is where i have some 14 transactions okay so it is listing out okay from whom all whatever the things that i have purchased so there is some purchase of some 74000 of uh, tax credit that is available for me now i want to know out of this 74000 okay how many of these people have filed their returns so that i can take the input tax credit so that is available in my gst portal so i have logged into gst portal and i can download gstr 2a report so i have downloaded the gstr 2a report which i just copied onto one specific folder so i could actually load that file click on load file okay and it is asking where this path of the file okay so i will i just copied on to this path okay to show the sample okay so i am just taking this path and the file name it has not read the file name okay gst or returns 2a 
uh, for the year 1-1-2020, others zero. I'm not sure why it didn't read. It should have read. Mm. Just hold on, let me just check. Should I? Extract. I don't think I need to extract, but still I'm just checking for No, one second. 31 January 2020, January 2020. Compressed file, it should actually read this compressed file, which is available. Load file. Okay, so let's do one thing or uh, let me just download the latest one. I'm just going to GST portal. Okay. Three nine zero four double seven. So I've just logged into the GST portal. Return to dashboard. Okay. So I will just go for the month January. 1920 okay i've got this gstr2a i'll just click on download generate okay so it has generated it's saying it'll take 20 minutes to uh, download okay so we'll come back to this before we close this session i'll show you how to import and do the reconciliation so it's saying it will take 20 minutes to generate this file let it generate okay we will revert back to that We'll continue with the other things, then we'll come back to this. Yes, okay, probably it has to read that compressed file. Okay, I'll come back to you. Okay, let this file get generated. Okay, so by that time, let us move on to tally and see the other capabilities. All right, so this is how you have to do the adjustments. Once when you complete the adjustments, okay, you are ready to file your GSTR reports. There was option to download both Excel as well as JSON file. So Tally will read both JSON as well as Excel. Not an issue. Okay. So now let us just go and look at how do you extract these informations. Okay, so uh, let this tally be minimized. Let us go to the other tally. Okay, I just closed the other tally, right? Okay, so let me open one more tally where we were doing the Okay, so assume that now all my entries are ready. I need to file my returns. So by 10th of April, we need to file, sorry, by 10th of every month, succeeding month, we need to file GSTR1. So just go to display statutory report GSTR1. So this is available. So this report is available. So whatever the mistakes that you have, ensure that you are correcting those mistakes. So there is some mistake here, port code is wrong. Okay. So that was the export. I don't know what is the port code. Let it be like this. Assume that we have rectified all the errors. Okay. What you could do is you could just say export GSTR1. So you could export this file in CSV, Excel, as well as JSON. 
So JSON is the data interchanger, okay, where you could just export and directly import it onto portal. Okay, Excel, if you import, because uh, GST has given an offline tool where you could use that offline tool and, imp and import the Excel for filing your GST returns. So that is also possible. So first let us look at the Excel format. So I'm just taking on Excel format. Okay, so it is the file name is GSTR1 and it is giving the GST number of the client and underscore April 2020. So it is giving the month and the year. So the file name will be the same GSTR1 with the GST number and the month and the year. Okay, if you require the document summary, you could enable that, yes. Okay, so now it is just ex exporting the data to Excel. Okay, so you, you could just wait for a few seconds. It is just exporting all the required data. And this Excel format is as per the GST offline format. In the same format, the data has got directly got exported. Okay, you could see what are all the B2B invoices that's available. Okay, field wise, it's giving the information. Okay, GST number, invoice number, due date, invoice date, invoice value, taxable and everything. Okay, so it is just giving all the details. Right, all 10 invoices have got extracted. Then you have B2C small. If there are anything B2C small, you'll get here B2C large, B2C small. Okay, so you're getting all these details over here. Okay, then if there is any credit notes, it will be available here. Okay, if there are any debit notes, it will be available here. Okay, if there are any summary of uh, expenditures for the GSTR one that you could see over here. Okay, advance receipt if there are anything adjustments if there are anything, exemptions if there are anything, HSN code summary wise, some summary detail. Okay, HSN summary details is available over here. And what are all the additional documents? So it is saying invoice for outward supply from one to 10, 10 invoices has been captured. Invoice for inward supply for unregistered person. Okay, from serial number one to serial number seven, three has been captured. Okay, this is what it's giving the summary of the information. Now you could use offline tool and take this file and file the returns. So this is one way of doing things. Okay, uh, GST has an offline tool. The second option, what you could also do is, you could also export this GSTR1 on JSON format. Where directly, see, in, if you are doing it on a JSON format, Okay, it'll, you cannot open this data and see whatever is there, you need to just upload because this is data interchanger format. You don't have an application to open. Okay. If you want to open this application, then you need to download offline tool from the GST portal and open this file. So this is given to ensure that once when you extract the data from tally, you no more make any changes to that you will directly upload that details. So GSTR1 is available. You could just log into your GST portal. Okay, say example, I'll just show you, I'll not, down, I'll, I'll not upload this. Okay, I can just go to GST portal and show it to you. Okay, so this is my GSTR2. Okay, yeah, file has come. Oh, Excel JSON format, okay. So fine, let it be on Excel itself. Let me just download this file. It's giving some error temporarily might be temporarily down because, okay. So it's GST as usual, it is giving some error. Okay, don't worry. Okay, so let us JS1 also, let me just click. Okay, both have clicked. Let me see which will come faster. Okay, so now what I could do is, say example, if I want to import this GSTR1, okay, I could go to my returns. Okay, assuming this is for the month of March. Okay, 
why not i'll show you my live data anyhow i need to upload my gstr march data so let us just go rather than doing this let, let us do it live i'll show it to you how you could upload the gstr so i'm just going to my live data this is my live data i'm filing my live gstr1 okay so you could just look at it display statutory reports gstr1 this is my march gstr1 okay i have everything okay nothing to resolve anyhow let me just cross verify okay is my gst correct is my sales register correct okay it looks like everything is correct okay so i am just going statutory report gst gstr1 it is showing for the month of march okay everything is perfect i believe i am just exporting gstr1 in json format okay so i'll just put it into a different folder so that it's easier for me to track so i'm just going to today itself 8th 8th uh, april folder only okay so let me just export here okay extract it so gstr1 is available here hope everyone is able to see on my screen there is gstr1 json format that I have extracted from tally it's my live data i'm just now filing my gstr1 report for the month of march hope everyone is able to see the screen can anyone confirm on the chat yes okay thank you so now i need to just upload this file gstr1 what i am looking at here okay so i'll do one thing i now i will move to my portal okay so i have come to march search okay so it's saying due date is 114 so you have an option prepare online prepare offline i'll just click prepare offline okay and it is asking you no offline transactions for given date for the period currently i have not uploaded is what it is telling me there is no transactions i'll just click on choose file okay and giving the path where the data is available okay so where is my gstr1 this is my gstr1 all right i am just selecting this file and clicking on open so it has got uploaded without any errors see here 8th april 17 hours 02 minutes 54 seconds there is a reference id for the upload and it says in progress and error is zero not applicable okay and it is giving me a message your json file has been uploaded successfully it will take around 15 minutes to do validation please come back after 15 minutes all right so this is as simple as that if you are maintaining your gst everything properly okay you could just simply transfer the files right okay so let us come back after 15 minutes to see whether our returns are appearing or not so march month okay still it is showing 000 it's still not updated okay so we'll come after 15 minutes so let's go back to tally so this is how you file your gst returns okay this is my live data let let me close my live data not required okay so now let us go to the training data so here you could just click on gstr1 and do the export okay let us go to the chat and see what are all the questions we have i thought you selected offline yes i selected offline only i selected the offline and i uh, linked the file offline file
Nagraj, I did the I I do select I did selected the offline only. Will it update? Yes, it will update. Okay, so let's move forward. Like I do this GSTR one update, I could also do my GSTR three B. Okay, similarly, I'll go to GSTR three B on twentieth of uh, the succeeding month. I'll ensure that I've corrected all my uh, mistakes from this report, and just click on export return. Same way, it gets exported either JSON or Excel format, and I could. Export and go to GST portal and import that file. Okay, it is as simple as doing that. Other things that is available as part of the GST is your annual computation. Okay, so here what in tally that you will get is you will get all the summary details for you to do the annual computation because most of the time annual computation is a Tricky work that you are supposed to do reconciliation month by month by month and do it. And what I have seen is not even one percent of the GST registered dealer will be able to do by themselves. Okay, it is very very laborious job. So in tally, what you get is you get the complete one year ka data for doing. your annual returns so this is the base data that you will get you need to take this base data and there are multiple forms that you need to fill this data will give you an opportunity to fill that form with the relevant information relevant numbers okay but there is no option for you to directly extract this and upload it to gst portal that is not available right the next is eway bill details so for which are all the invoices where you have extracted the eway bill details okay so that will be available over here and you could also update eway bill information so for the invoices for which party say so like example for extrude hone for the period 1st april to 30th april so it is listing out my sales invoices where i could update on one screen i could update all the eway bill numbers at one shot okay so that is possible so generally what happens is for every invoice i need to prepare a separate eway bill right so for every invoices i need to come and update the eway bill number and eway bill date and you will also get the eway bill report currently we have not used this so it's showing us blank okay then isugam it was an uh, uh, earlier uh, design of isugam okay that might not be applicable now chalan reconciliation once when you do a monthly return when you file and when you uh, fill the chalan okay you should also do that reconciliation so i didn't sorry i didn't show that entry of how do you account that chalan reconciliation ch chalan entry right so when you are making a gst payment okay say so like example on 20th of may i make the payment for april right so i'll just go to uh, payment okay so i am just changing the date as 5th, 16th of may by on 16th i am making the payment so when you are go to the payment here you could do a start payment so for which period for gst for 1 to 30th april now what kind of payment is it a regular payment is it a recipient liability or an advance i'll just say it's regular payment okay so i am paying through bank example i'm just showing it to you okay so now i'm making payment for uh say cgst uh so i'm just taking okay assume that we have made some adjustment say example i'm just saying output cgst okay so 10000 rupees okay i'm just showing you sgst 10000 rupees okay and output i against I, igst i'm making 5000 rupee payment let us assume that i'm making 25000 rupee payment okay 
so now once when you are making the payment you need to give additional details like how are you making the payment cash over counter because less than 10000 rupees still you could make a cash payment check over counter are you going to bank and depositing the check or credit card you are using e payment debit card you are using or you are using dd or you are doing nft rtgs or you are making bank e payments so example i am just saying i am doing nft rtgs okay name of the bank state bank of india okay cpin number then chalan identification number i am just giving the chalan identification number utr reference number okay for making the online payment and date is example 16th of may okay so i am making this uh through e payments output cgst 10000 rupees okay and i could give all that reference number okay then output sgst e payments reference number sorry i took 15000 sorry it should be 10000 and i have output igst utr reference number for the month of april paid so once when i go back when i take the print okay if you are paying over the counter by check this will be very very helpful okay where you could take this print of this okay and even i think you could also make a chalan print print advice so you could enable all these details basically you get this advice all right so this is where you make the payment details okay so can we import the data from portal and upload it to tally yes that is for your reconciliation of gst or 2a that is what we were trying to do okay let me see whether now let us just go back to portal and see what is the status of our gst or 1 i'm just going to this gst or 1 okay click on this has this got updated you are able to see on the screen my gst r1 has got updated right so now you could cross check with your tally date also saying is that the numbers fine or not okay so let me just open our uh, uh, live tally to see whether this numbers are showing correctly or not okay so display accounts book sorry display statutory report gst r1 so b to b is 264015 47000 is the gst is it fine so this total it is showing 311000 and 47522 that is the total value taxable value is 264015.94 47522 perfect it's matching then 3700 is the small invoice okay so that is typically showing over here b to c others 3700 and 666 hsn wise summary has been uploaded there are 34 documents that has got uploaded okay it has perfectly imported without any problem if you want invoice wise details click on this okay now you could see gst number wise 
invoice number of invoices what is the taxable value what is the tax charged okay so party wise it's available right so this is what you could actually look at there are 30 invoices okay each invoice wise this information is available okay the same thing has got uploaded over there okay so i'll just go back to gstr1 okay then once when we have this gstr1 you will cross verify all these things and just say generate gstr1 summary for your update gstr1 summary was recently generated in case you have discrepancies okay i don't have any discrepancies now i can go back and say i want to acknowledge this and submit proceed okay so i have clicked on this so it will take few minutes so that i could file the returns i have clicked on submit okay it will take few minutes for me to so i could also preview this it has got just downloaded i could go and cross check this at any point of time okay so this has to open it will take few minutes for me to open then i could actually file my gst returns gstr 1 to tally it is not possible madam gstr 2a to tally is possible no i i'm i'm unable to understand why do you want from gstr 1 to tally so you will go and make a manual entry in gstr uh, portal and you want that to be as part of invoice and tally which customer is trying to do that no that is not possible i understand since your computer has got crashed you don't have those datas but you cannot import back from uh, gstr portal to tally you want to see the invoice wise uh, in the portal once again nagraj okay so let us go to gst portal you want to see the invoice wise yeah so example you take in first invoice okay invoice 1 for it's not the first invoice it might i don't know what is the invoice so here it is saying invoice number 285 1920 date of invoice invoice value total invoice value what is the taxable value what is the gst it's available okay so i could go back okay and if you want to look at some other so this has two invoices this customer has two invoices on 31st march there is 289 invoice number 10000 rupees and 900 on 29th 10800 rupees and 972 so is this okay uh, nagraj so invoice wise you will get if you sell it to customer who has not registered it will not come in b to b okay it will be available in your b to c here in your b to c it will get consolidated state wise okay it will not give you the invoice wise it is just consolidating state wise okay so there is one question from rajesh sir say we have 100 of sale invoices above 50000 so for 100 invoice we have raised 100 eva bills and we have upload updated all eva bill numbers to tally okay can we extract this eva bill number report say for instance on later time some error and we came across for a specific eva bill number so can we get the eva bill extract from tally yes you can get rajesh it's available okay let's go to manjula 
is there any option to specify whether input goods service or capital goods for all jv entries now when you are making a jv entry you are you, you could specify see for that you need to go to typically a jv uh, start adjustment entry through adjustment entry yes it's possible can we rectify gst r1 after uploading yes after uploading up till you uh, file gst r1 you could go and make any changes say example now i already uploaded but still i have not submitted this so i can just go to this open this invoice on gst portal okay here i will have an option so now it is edit is blocked because i have told submit okay but if you have not clicked on submit this edit will be available click on this edit and you will be able to make any rectification but that is before you file after import but after you have confirmed it you will not be able you will not be allowed ragav is that clear okay so now i think it should be possible see now this file returns is available okay i can i have just clicked on file return okay so it's saying okay uh, confirm select mahesh kiran okay i do with evc so i get an otp on my mobile number i just update this otp Six seven okay so i just clicked on the otp and verify so it says gstr1 for this gst number for the return period march 2019 has been successfully filed acknowledgement reference number is so and so gstr1 can be viewed in your dashboard login so it successfully filed okay so what i am doing is on a monthly basis i file gst returns on a monthly basis on a monthly basis from the day of gst right from july 2017 till today i am using tally and i am just filing my gst returns okay i am not taking any help of my uh, chartered accountants or my tax auditors or anything on a monthly basis of course i go to them for any clarification i go to them for my annual returns okay i go to them if i have made any mistakes okay but it will become as simple so that i could do it of myself when i could do it of myself i am sure all of you could also do it of by yourself uh ragav is asking how to upload excel gstr one file sometime dsc not attached sir the dsc we tally or we do not have any control okay because for filing if you have selected the dsc you need to have that digital signature okay how to import from excel to gstr one you need to have an offline tool where gst has an offline tool you need to download that tool using that tool you can file the returns ramesh now filing from march 2020 time is extended up to june 2020 is it right uh yes it is right how to extract the vwe bill numbers okay so how to extract vwe bill numbers just go to uh display statutory reports vwe bill okay eve bill report okay give period for which period you want to see this say example from 1st of april to 30th of april so it is showing me which are all the eve bills that are available for this period fine tunes mahdi 
where I have generated for this two this thing. Now, if you want party wise, click on party wise here. Select which party you want. It will show only for that party. So if, during this period for that party, how many ever eBay bills are available? Okay, it's available here. Click on export. Take it to your Excel. Okay, do whatever analysis you want to do. It's available. Right. So are there any clarifications, any questions with specific to GST across? Because today we will be closing this GST session. Are there any clarifications, any questions unanswered? Check whether two-way download is available. Yes. Thanks, madam. Thanks, Manjula, for reminding me. Let me just go and see whether this GSTR 2A is available. So that was for the month of January. GSTR 2A. Download. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's available. I'm just downloading that. Okay, so I've just downloaded. It's available on. Okay, so let me just open my tally. GSTR report. GSTR 2, right? For the month of Jan. Oh, it has gone to. One four nineteen two thirty one three twenty twenty. Display GST reports GSTR two for the month of Jan. Right. So I'll just click here on a load file. I'm selecting the path. See now it is recognizing this zip file. Okay, because see there are multiple checks it will do. First, is it a GST or 2A report it is going to check? Then is the GST number is matching to the company's GST number it is checking? And is the month correct it is checking? It's doing a lot of validations. Then it will list. Okay. So it is listing over here. I will just say enter. Now what it does is it will automatically extract that file, read and show it to you on the tally. Okay. Please send us the recorded of this message to your mail ID. Okay, sir, we depend on auditors how to send our entire data to them. Okay, so we will explain you how to send your data. Sir, what if GSTR1, GSTR2, and GSTR3B? I guess I have missed the explanation. Okay, I'll come back to you, uh, Amira, one second. So now let us just go to this and I'm just clicking on import. So this data has got imported. It says this file loaded successfully. Total number of invoices is 16. Update reconciliation of your invoice status. It is asking, do you want to update the reconciliation? Yes. Now it is reconciling. It is checking what is the invoice number on the portal versus what is the invoice number that I have in my tally and it is doing the reconciliations. See, look here. There are two datas now. One is showing in blue and one is showing in black. Black is the data which is available in my books as per my books. Blue lines are the datas which are available as per the portal. So now I have 14 transaction, but the portal has 16 transaction. Probably I have missed out one or two transactions. That is exactly what it is telling. So now if I just click on this. Okay. See here. Reconciliation status completed. So for this affiliate marketing services, data is not available. Okay, but for this, the second one, first the data is not available for 589 rupees. Okay, so my supplier has uploaded the data, but I have not recorded this. So I need to check where I have missed. This affiliate market, it has got 
reconciled. So what I have recorded and what is available on the portal, it has automatically got reconciled. Just dial, it has got reconciled. Bharti Airtel got reconciled. Tally India Private Limited got reconciled. Printo documentation got reconciled. Tata Sky got reconciled. Sistec, who is my distributor, it has got reconciled. Pushpanjali Textiles, who are, uh, sorry, enterprises who are our printing uh, uh, suppliers, got reconciled. Vengtesh HV, who are our landlord, they have also filed. What has not reconciled here? Available only in my books, but not on the portal, which means that I have recorded, but this supplier has not uploaded his invoice yet, for which was for the month of January. Now, this is where I need to chase him, saying why he has he not uploaded, why I don't get. There are two reasons he would not have uploaded. Because we are looking at January, he might be on a quarterly basis, so he might upload in the month of April. So I need to wait till that time. Because if he is on a quarterly returns filing, he will upload only in the month of April. All right. So this gives an easy way for you to reconcile how much of input that you have confirmed that has got confirmed from your suppliers and it has already got uploaded. Okay. So is this clear? Are there any questions on this? And this is very, very important. Okay. If you want to ensure that you get right input tax credits, okay, you should have the reconciliations on your screen. Will it show differences? If there are differences, yes, it will show differences. So on the screen, you are able to see Manjula. Okay. So for one supplier, he has not uploaded the invoice. For one supplier, though they have uploaded the invoice, have not recorded. So both the reconciliations are available. Until the time of quarterly, the amount difference, what happens? It will still be showing as unreconciled. So once when you do that, it will get reconciled. Okay. So if there are any questions, please put it on the chat. Okay. We could go through that. Okay. Before, uh, okay. We'll say, okay. Pallavi, if I have not entered any bills, can only download from portal. Yes. You could just only download from portal. Which file to download from portal Excel or JSON? You could download any of the file. If you, if you download Excel file, you can open it on Excel. If you are downloading JSON file, you have to open only on tally. So both is possible. Okay. For tally import also, both it will import. Either Excel or JSON, both will import. You build to Systec or Systec build to you? Sir, Systec is my distributor. I procure from him. So he is billing on me. Okay. So few thoughts. Okay. Before we uh, close this session, if you have any questions, please put it on the chat. If anyone wants to talk, okay, I can open uh, their voice. I can unmute you. Please, you could ask your questions. Okay. While uh, we are doing that, let us go to the presentation and look at, okay. Did we cover all this portions? Yes. We covered expense ledger. We covered income sales, suppliers, customer, GST, all these things we did. Okay. Sales transactions, all these things morning, morning itself. We did all this details. Okay. And our contacts are available. Okay. So before we get into all these things, okay. Some of the thoughts I need to leave on GST. Okay. GST is a very, very effective law provided screen. I have made you the host. You could share your screen and I will also, you could also unmute and talk. On the top, you are getting participants list. Click on that uh, 
and next to participant list there is something called new share Uh, okay, so you can go. To, yeah, you can go to that and you can share. Participants. Next to participant, you have something called share, or you get new uh, share, something share or new share. Uh, like mute, start video, share, participant, yeah, share, record share. and meeting yeah. setting. No, no, share, share. You have share? share? No, I don't have share. What do you have? Record and meeting settings. Record and meeting settings. Screen share, you have screen share? Or share? Uh, yeah, yeah, one share. share is there. Yes. Yeah, click on that. This will stop other screen sharing. No problem. Do you want to continue? Yes, okay. please continue because it will stop my screen and then it will then, then you. Okay. Uh, then it is listing. Document. No, no. There, there is one screen share. It is called screen. Screen is there. Yes. Screen yeah. Click there. on that and click on share. Screen. Share. There, there is one now. share button. There is one share button. Yes. Click on that. Yeah. Now, yeah, I'm getting your screen. Okay, so now you please show me. Okay. Uh, what are you seeing? I am not okay. Are you seeing my face or the screen? Uh, no, neither I'm seeing. I'm just seeing my face. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, wait. Yeah. Start video. No, I want to, yeah, 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 yeah. okay, okay, oh, 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 okay, huh, okay, fine. Now, I have to go to, um, uh, for GST, right? Sir, 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 let's do one thing, it's very difficult for me to look at like this. Okay, we'll close this meeting, and I will uh, mm -hmm. come on one-to-one uh, -one discussion. Okay, please okay. share your mm -hmm. uh, computer through any desk. Okay. Okay. So we will look at that any desk and see what sure. is the issue. It's it's